everyone, welcome to Language Travel Adoptee with me, Emily, in case this is your first time here and your first time meeting me. I am an avid language learner that loves to share her own personal tips, tricks, and storytelling experiences through language learning. Since it is so close to 2023, everyone is posting their language learning goal. I wanted to bring up a very important reflection that I figured out while I was comparing how I made my language goals for 2023 and how I made my language goals for 2022 and before. I'm going to be very direct from the very beginning. Do not define your language goals by a single language level. My only exception to this would be if you are actually preparing yourself to take a certified language exam. And I have fallen into this trap a lot myself. In 2021, I would have said, oh, well, I just started Spanish last year, but I was only about a B1, which would be lower intermediate. I want to be a C1, which would be low advanced. I would ideally like to be between B1 and B2. It has not been a surprise to me that I've never reached some of those goals, especially after I decided to learn and maintain multiple languages a year. So for those who do not know, I'm going to be used what's called the CEFR levels. And I know that I've been using them a lot in my videos if you've been watching me before. However, I think it is important to re-review what each of those levels mean and what they actually require of you in order to pass an exam at that level. So CEFR actually stands for the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages, and it grades language hopefuls from an A1, which is super beginner, to C2, advanced and fully communicative. A1 can communicate in everyday situations with commonly used expressions and elementary vocabulary. A2 can understand sentences and frequently used expressions related to areas of shopping, local geography, employment, etc. B1, which gets more into an intermediate level, states, that you can understand points regarding family, work, school, or leisure. They deal with most travel situations and areas where the language is spoken, and they can create simple texts on topics of personal interest. B2 gets a little bit more advanced than that, and this is usually my level that I aim for if I'm really dedicated to learning the language well. B2 can communicate easily and spontaneously in a clear and detailed manner, able to understand and be understood in most situations. C1, which gets into the advanced territory and is what I would usually aim for if I knew that I was staying in the country where the target language is spoken for a long time. C1 can express themselves fluently and spontaneously without searching for expressions often. You can use the language flexibly and effectively for social as well as professional purpose. C2, which is the highest level, you can understand easily anything heard or read. So note that I use these levels a lot because the very first experience that I had with language learning was in Europe because I studied in Germany and Italy while I was abroad in college. However, there are different systems of measuring language level, even according to country or region of the world. For example, if you were wanting a job with the United States government, you would take maybe something like the OPI. So there are a lot of metrics to take into consideration when you are measuring your level like that with an exam. After hearing the definition of all of these language levels, it would make sense that that's a good thing to strive for, right? Oh, I want to communicate effectively and without much error and everything like that. However, there's a lot to be taken into consideration. And this is something that I did not think about when setting my own language goals. Number one is probably lack of time, especially when you're learning multiple languages. It's important to note that these language levels have four categories of testing. So that would be writing, reading, speaking, and listening. And in order to usually pass an exam you can't just have one or the other. You usually have to test and pass all four of those capacities. Now we can always debate the validity of language tests. However, that's for another video. But this is something that I did not think about when I was setting my goals, when I was saying, I want to be a B2 in Spanish. That's because the reality is you will have less time at multiple times throughout the year that you are trying to reach this language goal and possibly more times throughout your life, more than not, where you are so busy, time to rest, commit to a life outside of language learning and work a typical 40 hour work week 
like me. I definitely did not have to do in college. I definitely had a lot more flexibility in my time. However, I felt that my time was organized by someone else 40 hours a week. It made it a little bit harder to organize writing, reading, speaking, and listening for even one language during the week. So even if it is theoretically more doable, if you are only focusing on one language and focusing on improving all four of those capacities, however, with multiple languages is where it gets tricky. And I swear, I don't think I would ever have the time commitment for that. Now, if you do have a lot more time and flexibility in your schedule or only work part-time, I am very jealous of you. But let's return to the people who work 40 plus hours a week, just like me. It's important to note that as our lifestyle changes, our goals will change. And sometimes defining your progress by a huge level that encompasses all four of those categories is just not very realistic. Number two is this goal is way too broad. So most likely your level in all four of these categories for a language is going to be a little bit different. Maybe they're super different if you are learning different languages. And they definitely will be different if you haven't been practicing all four categories consistently. I've also found it more challenging to keep up with all four of these categories if I'm definitely not in the country where the target language is constantly spoken. I'll give you an example of this. In Spanish, I'm more of a C1 in speaking, more of a B2 in listening and reading, and then probably between a B1 and a B2 for writing because I hardly do that. It's going to really vary with what you decide to use your study time on. I usually listen a lot of the time if I don't have a scheduled speaking lesson or conversation course throughout the week because I feel like this is going to help me the most with having a conversation, which is usually my overall goal with learning languages. However, other people are going to have other preferences and that is okay. If you feel like you are pulled towards one category over the other like me and you are not preparing for a language exam, that is totally fine. I encourage you to go towards what is most enjoyable for you instead of putting so much pressure on yourself to attain such a broad B2 or B1 goal. Remember that language learning is very personal and very vulnerable in a lot of ways. Be honest and vulnerable with yourself whenever you are thinking about really if you are not studying for a language exam, what version of studying speaks most to you. That is going to help you make it fun, make the process enjoyable of learning a language, and not stress you out. That is definitely something that I would recommend my younger self to do. Number three of why you should not define your language goals by just one level, the definition of a language level is hard to measure by yourself. And your language level can go up and down throughout the year if you, you are not practicing it consistently over a year's time. So reaching and maintaining maintaining one level is not as tangible as defining a certain goal with an end point. Let me give you some examples of great things you can set your tangible goals towards. Reading a book because you can physically close the book cover when you are done. You can finish watching a movie series or a book series. Journal for even 10 to 15 minutes a day in your target language. Again, you are using to set a tangible goal measured by time for your language learning. And even setting a goal to pass the language exam. I mean, that definitely has process with an end result. Personally, I have found much more success and contentment within myself and my language goals if I know that I have a tangible, reachable goal with an endpoint. So the last reason is that language learning is a journey and not a destination. And it's cheesy, I know, but hear me out. I'm going to put it in perspective. So let's say you set a goal using a language level of C2 in German. This was actually my personal language goal when I was about 18 and I wanted to study in Germany. I did all of the courses in German. I passed my writing, reading, listening exams in German. I did a lot of presentations in front of native German speakers. I took classes right beside them. I made native German friends. I really reached all of my goals and beyond with that language when I was there. But five years later, here I still am. It's forgetting the gender of words, der, die, das. Forgetting even simple phrases or messing up the grammar. I have not written in forever. I think I even wrote a 15 page essay for a German class all in German. I have obviously not been able to do that ever since and I don't think I would volunteer my time to do that again. However, that means that I don't 
don't get a lot of practice with writing in German. And so I feel like my writing especially has gone downhill. So even after I had all of these goals set up for myself, life goes on after you reach your language learning goal and your language fluency and your language level will have its ups and downs as well after you meet that goal. And your language journey is as fluid as your language learning journey in a sense, which is something that I value so, so much. And I've grown to appreciate it so much more as I grow older and as my language learning goals have to evolve as my living situation and my lifestyle evolve, especially seeing how language learning can better tie into my mental well-being and wellness ultimately. So those are my top four reasons why you should not define your goal as I used to. Let me know in the comments below how you want to define your language goals this year and what those language goals actually are. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you have not, and we'll see each other later next week. <laughs>